Welcome back to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automo- Wait a minute. Wrong channel. Is that the wrong channel, Magic Mike? Yeah, it's the wrong channel. Wrong channel, okay. Welcome back to the wizard shop. There we go. Here we have Mrs. Wizard's R230 SL500. Someone actually commented they wanted to see the ball joint procedure on the ABC struts done. We're going to show that today, right after this. Any of you that have these with the ABC suspension have noticed maybe a front end clunk and you go over bumps, it's clunk, 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 clunk. There is a ball joint that connects the ABC strut to the lower control arm and that's typically the culprit. I've already done one, but I want to show you what it looks like with a loose ball joint on the passenger side and we're going to actually replace that today. But first I want to show you guys another project we're doing. We're not going to do an in-depth video on it but this is a common issue as well and how you fix it. You like my tablecloth, Mrs. Wizard? It's great. Nice pink bubbles. So we've been driving Mrs. Wizard's SO500 around for a while and it would go into limp mode. That scared the crap out of me. Yeah, it would shift really weird. It, it felt like the transmission slipping. It wasn't. It was just like second or third gear and it was staying in that gear. I scanned the codes and found out what was the problem. It was the turbine sensor inside the transmission, which is located on the conductor plate. In order to fix this, you have to remove the transmission pan and the valve body to get the conductor plate off the valve body. And if you guys want to come over here, I'll show you what we did. So here's the valve body. It has all these little solenoids that control gear changes. It's basically what they do is control the transmission, fluid flow. So I've got the conductor plate just kind of sitting on there and all these solenoids go into each of these holes. They're in order. I don't want to mess them up. Magic Mike took this out and I don't want to throw him for a loop. But the sensors are right here in these little towers. And if you turn it, take this off and turn it upside down, there they are. We've already replaced them. So I'll place it on this socket here in a minute. On the older Mercedes transmissions, you could just buy a new conductor plate when you had issues with the turbine sensors or float sensor or different things. You just buy the black plastic piece and put a new one on and you're done. But in these model years, the transmission control module is right here. That's what this little electronic box is. And it is hardwired into the conductor plate. You cannot take this off and replace it. So if you put another conductor plate on, you're going to have to program it to that vehicle. We don't want to do that. That's too much trouble. All we need to do is replace the sensor. They actually sell a kit. I got one on Amazon, actually. It comes with, these are the old sensors, but it comes with two new sensors and a tool to remove them. Basically, you have to scrape away the solder on these. It's flexible, this circuit board here. Once you scrape the solder away, you can just fold the circuit, the laminated circuit out of the way. Use this tool with a hammer and lightly tap it and it cuts the, the seal around each sensor. You pull the old ones out, you glue in two new ones with epoxy, just basically like they did at the factory. Then you re-solder the pins and we'll put this back together. Magic Mike will get it all back together. This will solve the turbine sensor code with new sensors. That's all it was. Is one of these sensors was bad. That's all it was. It will cause all that trouble. This would be much cheaper than buying a whole conductor plate and having to reprogram the module. We can be back in business. Now let's get to the ball joints. In the previous video we did with Mrs. Wizard SL500, we showed that these ball joints on the ABC struts are bad, just like this. That's a lot of clunking noise when you're going down the road. It's very annoying. Okay, now you can see over here on the other side, I've already replaced it with a brand new one. Let's push on it now. No movement at all. All nice and tight. This is the brand new ball joint. You really can't find these at your local parts store or FCP Euro. They really don't even sell these. You have to go, I actually got them from this company, Rebuild Master Tech. 
That's where I actually found these. I think they were $70 or $80 a piece. They're not too expensive, but you're actually able to get these if you go through the right vendor. So in your years when you worked at a Mercedes dealership, you, you were telling me they wouldn't even do this as an option. No, they wouldn't. What they'd do is they'd sell you a whole strut, and on top of that, they'd probably tell you, oh, you need two quarts of fluid and we need to bleed the system, and they tried to sell you a whole service on top of it, and it would get really expensive really quick. So they would want to replace both struts to solve this problem. Exactly. Probably four or five grand. Easily. Because the struts are, what, twelve, fifteen hundred bucks a piece? Just about. Then you got, well, in the dealership, they're going to be probably way more than that. They're going to charge you 140, 150 an hour really high, really fast. When you can actually buy the ball joint, that's the only problem. Miss Wizard doesn't have ABC suspension problems. She has a ball joint problem. And as you've seen on the last video, we did a rodeo mode and moved the car all around and it was a happy camper. This is the old ball joint. I actually had to cut the nose off to do this job and I'll show you why here in a minute. Well, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is remove the nut. When you get the nut off, don't throw it in the trash, don't toss it. We, I actually like to reuse these because the nut that comes with the new ball joints is actually a little smaller. It still works, but these are much stronger. They got a large shoulder on them. I would rather reuse these nuts. So don't toss them. We're going to reuse these. The nylon that's inside for the nylock still is very tight. If you put it on by hand and you can't put it on the whole way by hand, that means it's still good. We'll put that right there for now. Now we need to separate the ABC strut from the lower control arm. You don't need to worry about damaging your old ball joint. It already is damaged. It's ruined. You're not going to reuse it. Well, maybe some of you would, but I don't recommend it. So we're going to tear the boot. We're going to ruin this ball joint. It doesn't matter. So we're going to take this pickle fork and put it between the strut and the control arm. There it goes. Now this is going to take some serious hitting with the hammer. It's not, you're not going to lightly tap it with a little claw hammer that you use to put nails in the wall. You're going to have to hit it pretty hard. There we go. Now the strut can turn a little bit. You don't want to flip it way around. It can also move back and forth a little bit, but it's pretty, pretty tight. So what I do is just kind of let it set on the control arm there. There's no longer any spring or any kind of spring action holding the wheel. So I can pick up the whole wheel with, with my hands and move the whole thing. So based on that fact, we're not lifting the whole car. I'm going to put a jack under the tire here. The piece of wood. This will hold the wheel up and give us access to the ball joint. And that should do it. That gives us a nice clean access to the ball joint. You can see that thing is shot. Okay, now it's time to get I have two different ball joint press tools that I use. One ball joint kit is just your standard universal ball joint press tool. The other one is a 220, 230, 211 ball joint service kit made just for Mercedes Benz. I use that one to install the ball joint, but I use the universal ball joint press to remove this one. It's kind of a rig weird rigmarole of parts and pieces to make it work, but it worked very well. Let's get this one out of here. Before we get too far, I need to actually cut the nose of this off. And the reason why is both of the ball joint presses I have are just not physically wide enough to fit the cup pieces that go on and the width of the, the, the C clamp, I guess as you call it, the body of it. It just won't work 
taking the ball joint out. It will work putting it in, but to take it off, I just have to cut this off. So I'll use my handy dandy angle grinder with no guard, no face shield, and I will cut it off. So I've got the nose of it cut off, which will make our job a lot easier. We're going to use this ball joint press, some of the rings, spacers out of the kit. And to remove it, I actually found a socket, just a standard impact socket that fits perfectly onto the old ball joint that can fit through the bore of the strut and push it all the way out. It works really well. So I have one of the spacers that came with the ball joint press kit and it's exactly the diameter of the strut, but yet the ball joint still fits in there. There's not much room around this. There's very small edge that you're actually going to be pressing on, and this fits just perfect. I did have to grind the tip, you can see right there, with my, where I'm rubbing it, to fit where it pinches right up in here in the top. Just like so. Let's go ahead and get this set up. Okay, now here's why I cut off the nose. I can fit my socket right in. See that? With the nose there, I'd be, I don't think it would work. Let me get this set right here. So I've got it on there nice and tight. So, you want to be sure that you're pushing on the ball joint so you, on this side, you want to be pushing on the strut lip, not on the ball joint, just on the lip. You'll see when you look at it, it's just a very small ring around it. Let's take a look over here and I'll show you. As you can see, there's a very small lip around that you use to press it out. It just barely works. Very small. So we're pushing on the center of the ball joint with this socket and holding it in place around the ring that I just showed you. This is to remove it. I'm going to use a, my handy Milwaukee impact to push it out. Now we're going to tighten that and push the ball joint out with our impact. This, this would only work with a heavy duty half inch drive Milwaukee. I don't think your little 3 8 impact is going to do this job. I don't even think an air impact unless it's 3 quarter or 1 inch drive would do this, but these things are super powerful. Let's go ahead and pull, push it out. Okay. It's normal for pe the pieces to fall when you're working on ball joints, when it finally gets loose and all your little pieces fall. It's going to happen. And there's our old ball joint. And there it is. The old junky piece of junk. You can see that our socket is stuck in there because it's got the, the rubber, the boot kind of got wedged, but it's no problem. There's the boot. Now we have a nice clean removal of the ball joint. We did not damage the ABC strut. It is, we're going to get this cleaned up now. What I'll do is just soak it with some brake cleaner and Scotch Bright green Scotch Bright pad. Get it nice and clean in there. If you have rust and dirt and corrosion left behind in the little splines in here, It'll make it fight you really hard putting the new one on. It's already hard enough to put the new one on. They go in very, very tight. Okay. I'll go ahead and coat the inside with a light coating of grease. That helps to fight corrosion. And it helps us to put the new one on a little easier. Trust me, these go on so tight, grease is not going to make them fall out. So here's our new ball joint, and it comes with a new nut. And I mentioned that the, the old nut is a better of quality. You can see that the old one has a nice shoulder to it, and then the new nut doesn't work. 
I'm sure that the new one would work just fine, but I really like the idea of this strong shoulder. So I'm going to reuse the old nut. So what we're going to do is place this into position and use our Mercedes press to press it in. Let me wiggle it in there so it's tight. This one's a gold color. This is actually made for the Mercedes 211, 220, 230. It has all the special cups with a cutout made for that particular job. It works perfectly for this because this cup has a hole through it. You can see through there. It fits perfectly over the ABC strut without touching the ball joint itself. It lets the ball joint sink inside of this cup without getting bound up. So that goes there. You want it to have a through hole so that the nose of this has somewhere to go. And this side is solid and it fits perfectly on the back of the ball joint. You don't want to push in the center of it. You'll That's just a stamped steel, a cover. It'll, you'll break the ball joint. You want to push on the outer edge. So that's what they look like set up. Go over the nose. Oops. There we go. Make sure you got the ball joint in nice and straight so you don't wedge it or get it bound up. So now as we tighten this down, I can put my finger and touch the nose of the ball joint. That's what you want. Okay, like I said, you can slightly turn these. Just to, You don't want to turn it too much, but that way I can get my impact on that end. So we're going to drive this thing in now. I, when I put the other one in, it went in extremely tight. I would have to go a certain distance and let it sit for a minute and kind of ease up. Go a little bit further and then go a little bit further and it worked great. But they go in really tight, which is what you want. You don't want it loose in there. Here we go. Now we'll just let it sit for a minute, let it ease up, and we'll go at it again. I'm not exactly sure why I have to do it this way, but I think it's because it get, actually gets hot from the friction and starts to swell. As if you let it cool down, it starts going back in again until it gets hot. It's really tight. We go and get it off of here. So after you get it pressed in, you do just like we did on this side. You put it in, you put the nut on, and you're done. I'm going to skip some of that to save some time so it's not some huge video. But you can press out the old ball joints and put new ones in, and you put the nut on and you're back in business. So we got those replaced. No more clunking on the front end. That'll take care of that, and it didn't take a whole lot of money. We're going to let Magic Mike get the conductor plate and the valve body back together and get it back in the transmission and we'll kill two birds with one stone and get all this taken care of for Mrs. Wizard. You can check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. It'll have all these tools that I have just used here listed for sale. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, I really recommend you do that now. Thanks for watching. So what good does this, the pink bubble wrap do? That just keeps dirt from getting into the valve body. It's a nice clean surface. Oh, nothing special? No, it's nothing special. It just had that laying around. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah.